Hey everyone, my name is Shox. I'm here at Level in Berlin today. I'm covering the Berlin Brawl 2 and uh, it's a Monday. So it's gonna be a busy week for me because I have LEC of course at the end of the week as well and tons of meetings, but I'm really looking forward to the event and yeah, I'm gonna take you on a day in my work life. When it comes to the LEC, I think many people maybe think that we show up on Friday and Saturday and just do the show. And yes, we are naturals, but that's not how it works. Um, basically, our week starts usually um, officially on Wednesday. Wednesday is when we have all the meetings with the full team, all the casters, all the producers. And then we have a full day of basically brainstorming what we want in the show. Um, and making sure that we have the right stories to tell, you know, which players do we want to focus on, which players maybe have we not focused on enough, which stories are important, are there any roster changes, what in the meta do we want to talk about, and then also, very importantly, how do we want to show that, because you could just sit there and, and talk for a half hour, but we want to package it all in different ways, you know, maybe there's a game idea for something to uh, package the information a bit different, maybe there's something that we really want the Telestrator for because it is very deep analysis. Maybe we just want to have a little bit of fun. Maybe we want an interview. We discuss all those things on that day. And it's basically a marathon of meetings. We also have stats, a stats team rather. So three people who deliver us all the stats that we need and also offer us interesting storylines that maybe we not have, may not have thought about. Now, of course, the moniker with us is um, stats are handy, but they can't dictate everything you say, but they are handy uh, to, to make yeah, to make some things more understandable and to uh, illustrate a lot of things. So Wednesday is when the whole team comes together, but as is the nature of being in League of Legends esports, there's games all around the world constantly. So even on Monday and Tuesday, and sometimes even on Sunday, uh, you sit watching the games because it's all interesting, right? And it's all necessary to give context to the games in the LEC. Then on Thursday, there's a lot of personal prep, um, VOD review, etc. There's a lot of sessions where we sit down and we, for instance, say, okay, we're gonna watch all of the analyst de desk segments from the last three weeks. And then uh, we look at delivery, we look at, did we get our points across? Was that maybe a bit too storytelling, too narrative e, which I know that the fans always check us out on as well. Uh, and we just try to improve from there. And then on Friday is when we have the show, and then it starts about five hours before the show. We get in, we have a team meeting to go through the script one more time to make sure everything is in the right spot. Then we go into rehearsal for an hour, an hour and a half to make sure that you know everything's on point, not just for us, but also for the light, uh, for the sound, for the replays that need to be shown, that everything is just all worked out. Um, and then we have makeup for about an hour, we eat, and then it's live for seven hours, which is a kick, but uh, we just go on adrenaline. We know we'll, we are prepared. So nothing can really go wrong if you're prepared, you know, even if there's a technical break or whatnot, we love talking anyway. So um, that's how we work that out. And then at the end of the day, there's another meeting. Usually on a Friday, I guess it's around 11.30 after PGL. Um, another brainstorm to make sure we have everything we need for the next day and then we do it all again on Saturday. Doing the LEC is, is a really an all-encompassing job just because of how much goes into the production also from my side as a host and how closely I work with the producers as well as you never really want to be not in the loop so you always have an eye on all the league news around the world. So weeks like these where I have uh, other projects that means there's usually just no days off for a couple of weeks which uh, I, I know freelancers know very very well which I love doing but it's all about trying to make sure that um, everything's planned out uh, and we'll, we'll sleep after, you know? Um, the most fulfilling part of my job is actually twofold. It has always been uh, getting an audience reception and seeing that people enjoy the content that we make, which was not always the case for the EU LCS, but it has definitely been the case with the LEC. And, and just to make sure, especially in this past half year, uh, year and a half of lockdown, you know, getting those messages of like, oh, I'm so glad that, you know, I was able to watch the show and it made my day so much better whilst I was stuck inside. I love that. And secondly, since I've gone freelance, what I've really, really started appreciating is going into new products and going into new production teams that do things differently and making sure I, I can apply everything I've learned into making the product better than maybe it was before. Um, and you can only do that by working very closely with, with the production teams like here at Level, for instance, who have been super accommodating. And that's when the magic happens. And it's really nice to like, really nail a show and then after just have that yes 
We did it. That's, that's one of my favorite parts. I guess people think everything gets prepared for you when you're a host, uh, and it's it's quite the opposite. Uh, I think hosts in particular, like Machine as well, Shiver, uh, and all of the amazing hosts um, who I'm forgetting to name, uh, they all put in so much work behind the scenes as well. And I think that is what makes, that is what, um, yeah, is the difference between a good host and a great host, being involved in the product. And there is a lot of work that goes into the behind the scenes, especially being someone who now also is, my brand is also so important for me. And it didn't used to be that way. 10 years ago, it was like, yes, I need my Twitter, but whatever. And now it's like, no, if you're a freelancer and you want to keep growing, it's so important. And um, I put a lot of thought into everything. And I think people sometimes think she just tweets whatever she wants or she just says whatever, but it's not that it's super calculated, but I do think about the things that I talk about, that I want to talk about, that I want to show, um, that I think my audience would find useful, um, also in terms of kind of body positivity and everything, especially being a woman in gaming. Um, and a lot more thought goes into it than people think. Um, I got into a bit of hot water <laughs> during the Euros. I love football, I always have, but I don't have as much time to watch. But during the Euros and the World Cup, I'm there. So I just started, I had a TikTok, Ender nagged me for like years and years. Um, and he was like, you need to get TikTok. And I was like, no, I already have so many social media platforms. It's exhausting, but I love TikTok. It's honestly great. Um, so for the Euros, I was like, I'll make some content around Belgium, we'll see. I broke some pasta, I made some Italians, very, very, very angry. Hey, but the video got like 5 million views. So, you know, you live and you learn, um, but it's a very important, part of uh, being a freelancer and being uh, even a commentator nowadays it's I would say unfortunately sometimes it's not only about what you deliver anymore in your actual job description but it's also what can you be outside of that uh, I find that pretty stressful I have to say like knowing that okay I, wherever I am okay I have to make content I have to do this it makes it sometimes hard to live in the moment um, so I sometimes really need to put my phone away for two days to detox from everything thanks for watching for more gaming related content, subscribe to the .esports YouTube channel to stay up to date.